Hello, this is Anuja Matthew. Today I'd like to talk about the results from a phase 1-2 clinical trial administered to humans. This is from a group in Oxford that gave a SARS candidate vaccine to uh, several humans in England. But before I do that, I'd like to just update you on the stats of the latest number of cases. So we have over 14 million cases of coronavirus and over 600,000 deaths worldwide. The United States still has the most number of cases with close to 4 million cases and 140,000 deaths. What's different in, I guess, the top 10 countries that are reporting cases is that I think India has now in the last month reported uh, several additional cases of coronavirus with significant number of new deaths. It's July 20th, 2020. The results that I'm going to talk to you today about are from an Oxford Group's vaccine trial. They've been working on viral vector vaccines for a number of years. They use a chimpanzee-based adenovirus as a vector that's highly modified and optimized. This viral vector is unable to cause disease by itself. But when the genome sequence of SARS was known, they were able to take the spike protein, the gene of the spike protein, identify it, sequence it, and put it into this viral vector. So they developed a CHADOX1, a chimpanzee-based adenovirus vector, that now expresses the spike protein of SARS coronavirus 2. So this modified, optimized vaccine is administered to humans or in animals uh, intramuscularly. And what happens is then the immune system now um, recognizes the spike protein. The spike protein is a foreign protein. The immune system recognizes the spike protein and produces antibodies and probably T cells against components of that's expressed in this vector, which is the spike protein. So now hopefully you are immune and can have antibodies and T cells against um, the vaccine vector. If you become exposed then or infected, the immune system is already armed or tuned to respond to the spike protein or SARS coronavirus 2 protein. Over a thousand people participated in this clinical trial. Around 500 people received the CHADOX SARS coronavirus 2 vaccine. And as controls, and around 500 people received a meningococcus conjugate vaccine. A very small subgroup of people, around 10 participants, received two doses of the CHADOX SARS coronavirus 2 vaccine. This trial happened in the United Kingdom. It, they began recruiting volunteers in April 2020. It happened in five distinct clinical sites. Um, I think the age group of the participants were between 18 and 55 years of age. They looked at safety and immunogenicity of the vaccine in people of different ages. The findings were published earlier today in the journal Lancet, and here's the reference. So participants received five times 10 to the 10th viral particles of the CHADOX1 vaccine or the meningococcus vaccine, and they picked this high dose based on their previous experience with a MERS vaccine that was similarly placed in this CHADOX1 vector. The participants who got a booster dose received the booster vaccine 28 days after they had their first dose. So in people who received either control meningococcus vaccine or the uh, CHADOX SARS coronavirus vaccine, they measured antibody responses. Antibodies, as I have mentioned before in previous lectures, are secreted by B cells. So they measured antibodies at baseline and following vaccination and they measured responses to the SARS coronavirus spike protein, which is the gene of interest uh, that was inserted into the CHADOX viral vector vaccine. They also measured T cell responses using an assay known as the LE spot assay that measures cytokine secretion, and it's a particular cytokine known as interferon gamma, which is traditionally used as um, representative of T cells being formed in response to um, the agent of interest. So in this case, it's to the spike protein. After vaccine was administered, they measured symptoms and they measured symptoms at the site of injection and systemically. Shown in this figure are systemic symptoms. 
some of which included chills, fatigue, fever, headache, joint pain, etc. There were four groups, people who received the Chadox vaccine who also received or were administered paracetamol or acetaminophen, people who just received the Chadox vaccine, uh, people who received the meningococcus vaccine who were also given paracetamol, and uh, people who got the meningococcus vaccine without paracetamol. So in all four of these groups, there were mild to moderate symptoms. These symptoms were higher in people uh, who received the Chadox one vaccine. The most common symptoms were fatigue and headache. And the severity and intensity of the local and systemic re reactions were highest on day one after administration of the vaccine, day one to two after administration of the vaccine. So there were symptoms, but they were not severe. They next measure the immunogenicity of the vaccine. So what does that mean? They first measured antibodies in the blood from people who had received the vaccine. So they collected blood from participants at multiple time points, including day 7, 14, 28, and 56 days after people had received the vaccine. And shown here are the numbers of people that were tested at each of the time points. They were comparing responses to day zero. So day zero is before you receive the vaccine, and that should be the baseline state of what your immune responses look like to sars cov two. They used an assay in this figure called an ELISA assay that measures the presence of antibodies to sars cov two spike protein. And here are the control uh, vaccine group that received the meningococcus vaccine and the Chadox one group that only received one dose, the group that received, so it's only 10 people who received two doses, and they compared these responses also to people who had natural infection with SARS coronavirus too. So one of the points really here is to see whether the vaccine can induce responses that are as strong as people who've had natural infection with SARS coronavirus too. So this is looking at ELISA titers. So what you want to see is a rise in titers compared to day zero. So typically at day zero, your responses should be low to zero. And then seven, 14, 21 days, and hopefully even 10 years after you've had a vaccine, you should have strong antibody responses. That means you have a robust vaccine. So if you're just looking at this figure, what it shows is at about 14 to 28 days after uh, individuals received a vaccine, there was an increase in the ELISA titers that detected antibodies to SARS coronavirus 2 spike protein. And this increase lasted for about 56 days. We don't know if it lasted longer, but the last time point they looked at was 56 days after vaccination. Uh, surprisingly, I guess, with people who've got a boost, there was no difference in, in, in ELISA titers between those who had just one dose versus those who have two doses. So if, if there was a boost, you should have seen a much higher ELISA titer in those who got the prime and the boost, and they didn't see that. The responses or the ELISA titers were fairly similar to those who were naturally infected with SARS coronavirus too. So that's quite interesting that uh, the vaccine is eliciting antibody titers that are similar to titers seen in people who've had natural infection. One point to make to, that I want to make here is I don't know when these samples were collected, what time point these samples were collected after natural infection. Uh, and in people who had the meningococcus vaccine, most of them were negative. But if you look, there are some people who are positive. So this is a bit puzzling and a bit surprising. Maybe they, these are responses to seasonal coronaviruses in some of the patients. But they, they didn't really address that. They next used a most stringent test to measure antibodies, which is measuring the neutralizing capacity of the antibodies. And in this, this is just a small sub figure of the main figure four. It shows that at 28 days after vaccination, the titers increased in most of the vaccine recipients. So this is a good sign. Interestingly, there were three people who had neutralizing antibody titers at day zero and their explanation for this was perhaps these people had had asymptomatic infection that was not detected prior to vaccination. Finally, they measured T cell immunity to the vaccine. So here they looked at the secretion of a cytokine known as interferon gamma using an LE spot assay. And this is widely accepted in the field as being a good measure of T 
T cell immunity to uh, vaccines. So they took blood, they took peripheral blood, and they stimulated them with viral peptides that uh, encompass the SARS coronavirus S protein or the vaccine insert. And they looked to see whether you could see in increased responses after vaccination. And in recipients who received the Chadox coronavirus vaccine, 14 to 28 days after they received the vaccine, they saw an increase compared to day zero in terms of interferon gamma spots uh, that are representative of T cells that are able to secrete the cytokine in response to stimulation. So in people who received the vaccine, there was an increase in T cell responses. In those who got a prime and a boost, there was an increase in responses. The boost did not necessarily help um, or improve the responses compared to a single dose. And in people who had the control vaccine or the meningococcus vaccine, there was no increase, which is a good sign. So this is a specific response to the vaccine in terms of T cells. The results are quite encouraging. So what the Oxford group was able to show was a single dose was safe, reasonably well tolerated, it induced both antibody and T cell responses, but I want to mention that this was, they only looked at one month after vaccination. That's a really important point. The limitations were the short follow-up reported to date, the small number of participants in the group that received two, vac two doses, and this was a single-blinded design. What I want to leave you with today is that the data are very encouraging, but ultimately you want to know how durable the vaccine response is. So these are hypothetical titers in SARS coronavirus 2 vaccines. The data today just looked at one month post vaccination with a viral vector vaccine. This is the Chadox 1 expressing SARS coronavirus S. There's plenty of other vaccines that are being tested currently. So all of us would be willing to deal with fatigue and maybe tenderness at injection sites and headaches and other symptoms if we knew for sure that the vaccine induced immunity, say, ideally for years. But even if it induced a long-lasting immunity for up to a year, that would be great. And maybe you'd get a booster shot at a year or maybe not, but that would be good. But what happens if immunity only lasts, say, for one or two months? Then that really doesn't make this vaccine really effective because six months from now, if you get re-exposed, it might not be that effective. And we don't know that yet. And we're waiting to see. Only time will tell. How about if you can generate antibody titers but not T cell immunity? What's known to date is that antibody titers, especially in response to coronaviruses, are not long lasting. So that is definitely a concern for immunologists and vaccinologists. But T cell immunity tends to be long lasting. So that's a good sign. Hopefully, T cell and B cell antibody uh, titers will be long lasting in both. Um, people who've received vaccines as well as people who've had natural infection. So there's plenty that's been published in the last month or two. I encourage you to read the literature if you're interested. Send me an email if you need further clarification, but I thought it was worth talking about one potential vaccine and what the data look like um, as of July 20th. And probably by next month, we'll have a whole series of other vaccines uh, to look at. Thanks again. This is Anuja Matthews.